this is a stool and a seat I made for my youngest grandson, Jacob. We celebrated his birthday at the end of last month, and I have just now gotten around to editing the video. Here it is. Hello everyone, Larry Satchwell here, back in my shop again. I've been trying to get to this project for months. I have subscribed to uh, Popular Woodworking Online, and they recently sent this project. I thought it would make a great present for my youngest grandson, Jacob's birthday. And it's coming up this weekend, so I've got to get started. I spent most of the morning going through my lumber pile, and lo and behold, I found one more piece of great-great-grandpa's cherry. I thought it was exhausted, but this was under a pile about a mile high. And you can see I've got piles of stuff all over the place. I'm trying very hard to get rid of some of this lumber. I just have an, an addiction to wood. I've got to get started. First thing to do is to break down this piece into more manageable size, and then I can get everything planed to the same thickness. <laughs> Time for some glue up. This is the two halves of the seat, or two sides of the seat. This will be cut down here. Got a pretty good joint there. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm kind of guy that puts glue on both sides. Again, I don't have a lot of room for error. So I'm going to try to match up this end pretty carefully. So I'm going to let this set up at least a couple hours, but that takes me into track practice. So I'll probably get to this in the morning. So I have everything cut to size. And I had plenty of wood. I don't have the uh, dowels yet. I'm going to make those out of maple. But right now I need to use the glue trick. And uh, the, these are the end support sides, the seat, uh, what are these, the sides. So I'm going to use some gap filling CA glue here and an accelerator, which I'm about out of. Maybe I am out. So these, the sides here require some layout, and the um, directions are very clear, although there is a lot of layout. Let's start here at the top. I like using this blue tape on this dark wood. I have a, a white pencil, but it's just not showing up very well. So this needs to come in two and seven eighths right there. The direction is suggested using a nickel to round off all the corners. And so I'm going to do that. I'll do that on all the seats and the steps and the support. 
And this 36 grit sandpaper will take that down in a matter of seconds. Well, get some of this junk out of the way. I am a, a messy cook. I do the same thing if I ever cook, which is rare. But I am ready for some assembly. I spent a good while this morning. Well, yesterday morning, I spent two and a half, three hours sanding everything smooth. So we are ready for some assembly. I uh, spent uh, two hours, hour and a half this morning. Uh, perfecting these two dowels. And you can use three quarter inch dowels. Turned this one yesterday and spent this morning turning this one and refining them so they fit in these three quarter inch holes. These are made out of maple and you could just use plain three quarter inch dowels but I have a lathe and um, I decided not to. So it's time for some assembly with these. I'm going to be using my favorite Miller dowels here. This is a step dowel. I've used it lots of times before. What my plan is is to glue this in and then pin it with a small Miller dowel. Just applying some glue to the very edge here. Because this is going to be pinned in, I don't believe it needs a lot of glue. And I've got to work carefully because this thing is really tight fit and I'm afraid that even though it's maple, it could swell a little bit. Dead on. All right. That means I can drill for the dowels. I won't put any glue on this sanded part of the wood any more than I have to. These act just like nails. You can feel where they want to stop and then you can dry them home. So there's going to be no nails in this stool. There are two carriage bolts and I stopped by Lowe's yesterday and got those and they're stainless steel. So it shouldn't be an issue of rust. Drive that one home. While the other part's drying, I've got the underside of the seat here, and I'm going to uh, put two Jacob. His birthday is 329.22, and then Big Daddy down below. He calls me, all the grandkids call me Big Daddy. It started off as a joke, and it just stuck. So to enhance this a little bit, I'm going to use this uh, Starbond Medium Black. It's got a very nice small tip on it and you can you guys squeeze it down into that indentation Use a soft bristle toothbrush, clean that out. A small piece of cardboard here with a three quarter inch hole. Even though this is a uh, flesh trimming saw, I just don't want to make any marks in there. And I'm just going to take my time and do this very slowly. So this bag is where the seat comes back and it is, needs to be three quarters of an inch longer. 
I had this scrap left over from where I rounded off the uh, seat. So now I can cut that flush. Yeah, it's time for some assembly. Now, since these boards are going to be so, uh, these Miller dowels are going to be so exposed, I sure want them evenly spaced. So I have a three and a half inch block here of, of uh, pegboard. It's the same width. And I've measured off to the end. So the center of it will be three quarters or three eighths of an inch. I have a quarter inch Forstner bit here with a very sharp point. That will center it here. And give me a nice mark to go by. I have some arrows on this indicating where I want it. And I'm going to put three. And I like that. It looks really good. They suggest using a penny for a spacer. And I'm, that's exactly what I intend to do. Put the clamps on here with the pennies in there. I'm really happy with the lineup. So now it's just a matter of drilling this square. I've used spray on shellac and given this several coats, several light coats. I don't remember how many times I get it. It dries really fast, so you can come by, uh, give it a coat, and 15, 10 minutes later, come back and give it another coat. I brushed off all the in, uh, tops here and the, and the sides with some 400 grit sandpaper and applied a little bit of paste wax. So now it's time for some assembly, which is not going to be all that easy. I'm using all stainless steel hardware and carriage bolts. Now, a carriage bolt has a shoulder on it, and that's what keeps it from turning. There's no slot or anything. And so the tricky part is getting it to sink into here and not turn. And I'm using lock nuts on here so the likelihood of this turning in the hole and becoming almost impossible to tighten is very, very good. It's a very strong likelihood. So that's where I've got to be careful. Another roadblock to being highly successful is that I'm going to put two of these fender washers between the wood, uh, the, the two wood parts that meet. That's not going to be easy, so, and to hold them on here with the screw. So here's my plan. I'm not seating this yet. I'm going to slip one nut over and put just a small dot. But that at least has them together so that I'm only worried about trying to sneak one in there. And so that it doesn't move, I'm going to put even a smaller dot on the wood here. And this will never be seen. And now I can do that on the other side.
Well, that wasn't easy. Now it's time to set this. To do that, you can literally pound it in there. And there it is. I'll use some old sweatpants here to buff this off. Happy birthday, Jacob. I hope you like it. Yay!